Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Natalie Rue and I'm the Marketing Manager for Professional Certification at BCS and I'll be facilitating this webinar. Today we'll be talking about the new BCS Foundation Certificate in Agile and we'll cover the approach taken when developing the syllabus, why we aimed to make it agnostic and about the development of the certification sorry, <laughs> question balance and why it was needed. Uh, we will also discuss what your Agile career could look like, taking a dive into the full pathway for a career in Agile. I am joined today by Margaret Morgan, uh, an experienced Agile practitioner with over 35 years experience in the industry. Simon Gervan, an Agile coach working in the public sector and is a subject matter expert. And Patricia Barlow, um, our Agile product manager at BCS. Just a bit of housekeeping to start with. This webinar will be recorded and available on the BCS website and our YouTube channel from next week. You'll also receive a follow up email after this webinar with a link to the recording. Please let me know if at any point you can't hear us by sending us a message in the text box on your screen. The webinar will last around 30 minutes with a Q&A session at the end. Depending on how many questions we get, the webinar may run slightly longer. So that you're aware, all attendees are on mute for the duration of the webinar. But if you have any questions as we go along, please use the question box at the bottom of your screen and we'll get to those questions at the end. So without further ado, let's get started. I will pass over to the speakers to introduce themselves. Simon, would you like to go first? Good afternoon. Well, I think you did quite a good job of introducing me already. So my name is <laughs> Simon Gerben, and uh, as uh, Natalie said, I'm an Agile coach, mostly working in the public sector, and together with Margaret, was involved in redrafting the syllabus for this uh, certificate. Margaret? Okay. Hello. Um, yes, Margaret Morgan already uh, introduced very well, I think, but uh, basically I, I was just thinking, actually, I've been in IT for over 35 years, quite a long time, and it's nearly half of that time that I've been using agile principles and practices um, to deliver various products and services. Um, so, yes, lots of experience in many different organisations and in different sectors and domains um, and very much a, an agile enthusiast who has come to realise over, um, over a long period of time that agile is a great way to make not just IT better or the world of IT better, but also the world in general. Thanks, Margaret. Um, and I'm Patricia Barlow. So I work at BCS. I'm the product manager for the Agile uh, portfolio, as well as, well as um, a number of other portfolios at BCS. Um, so yeah, so that's that's who I am. Perfect. So the first um topic that we've got or the first slide to sort of look at is is what is agile it's a term that's that's used quite a lot and especially at the moment we'll we'll see a lot of uh, people talking about agile ways of working and making sure that we're agile to move forward but i suppose if i if i go to yourself first simon what does agile actually mean what actually is it it's a widely misunderstood term and it's widely abused, unfortunately, and um, which is part of the reasoning behind how we built the syllabus as it happens, but we'll come to that later. Um, Agile is just an approach to delivering value and it's an approach that, that is on one hand very much common sense. It's about focusing and understanding your customer. It's about identifying value that you can deliver relatively quickly so they can get use of it quite quickly and they can help tell you if that's the right thing. It's um, about helping get all the right decisions made at the right place and empowering teams so that they're making better decisions and they're able to deliver better products and all that sounds really simple and really common sense and yet when we look at how people traditionally develop solutions whether they're software solutions or not that's often not how we do it and um, we like to try and do all the thinking up front we like to plan things out and we like to march along to that plan whether or not um, without really knowing whether or not the plan is going the way that it should. And there's a real um, kind of weight of, 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 of um, 
history and, and expectation and management theory that, that drives people away from thinking and behaving in a way that the agile manifesto and agile practitioners like, like ourselves would be, would be favoring. So at a foundation level, it's a really important thing to understand why it works, what it's trying to do, but also that it's a really difficult thing to do well and to expect it to be hard. Brilliant. And from your experience, Margaret, I know um, you said before about having sort of a long time in the IT. Would you agree with what Simon was saying in terms of it being a sort of misused term? Um, yeah, yes, I, I think uh, you're absolutely right. So um, quite often now, if I go into a, a new organisation, um, I find people will say to me that uh, we're agile, we're being agile, we're doing agile and in fact they're not at all all they've done is picked up some of the um uh, maybe the scrum ceremonies etc they may be doing a daily stand-up or a daily scrum and doing a retrospective or whatever but they're really not agile at all and um it's quite frustrating in a way because it that sort of behavior gives agile a bad name um so I think that's why we wanted to change the syllabus in the way that we did. Sorry, I'm, not, I'm trying not to skip ahead here, <laughs> uh, but it's really about um, it, it's about the mindset and about making sure that people start off with that correct mindset and then they start working in, in a particular way. Fabulous. I think if we move forward then onto the next slide um, and talk a little bit more um about the the um, certificate and and why it was created um bcs have had an agile certificate for a while you know we, we've used um the agile foundation certificate before but it really came to a point where we thought we needed to take a look at it refresh it and really start to understand what we wanted to get out there into the marketplace to make sure that some of the um misunderstanding of agile was was dealt with so margaret as you were talking before about sort of companies saying that they're agile and not really knowing it is this part of the thinking behind the certificate yes definitely so um in terms of the approach we were very careful uh, uh, before we started amending the syllabus to think about the vision um for this product and of course that is an agile technique in itself is to create a vision before you do anything else uh, and that really made us think about um, who were the target audience or the target customers for the certification and how we could make this new product better than other offerings that, that are about. Um, in other words, the differentiator um, in agile terms. Uh, and that's why we included in the new syllabus um, a 25% weighting on what we call the agile mindset uh, and, and the mindset part of it really focuses on the manifesto and the principles um, and how they contribute to successful agile deliveries of products and services and of course not just in the digital domain um, these agile principles can just as easily apply to um, non-digital products and services and the key for me, and um, hopefully Simon will agree with this, is um, the, ver the very first line of the, um, the Agile Man Manifesto. So we need to value individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Um, and that's really my, um, uh, my soapbox domain, if you like. Um, far too many organisations now immediately look for a tool and a process um, when they want to uh, become, become agile and it's really about not looking for tools and processes it's about looking at your own context and applying the agile principles to work out how you how you can deliver um, value to the business fabulous no, i do i do completely agree margaret and, and it's also worth pointing out that both margaret and i our coaches and practitioners we're not um we're not salespeople. we've not got products to sell we're not trainers we've not got courses to market so we were coming at this from a very much uh, a user's perspective and trying to, to make it very um 
very clear that, the, that it, was, it wasn't about a method or, or an approach, it was about a whole mindset. And when we were doing that visioning work, we we're also mindful of the things that have changed since the first syllabus was created four, four and a half years ago. Partly the other offerings the BCS has. So we wanted to, and this needed to fit in alongside the Scrum syllabus and alongside the Agile BA syllabus, and also needed to fit in with the, the progression within this certificate uh, from foundation up to practitioner. So we're very clear to, to think, well, what is a foundation syllabus and what, what's the foundational knowledge? And it wasn't foundation from the perspective of it's the simple, easy one at the beginning. It was more from a perspective of what are all the foundations that you want to build upon as you grow in your career as, a, as an Agilist? And can we get those kind of foundations set out, but do so in a way that makes it simple? So one of the challenges we saw with the original syllabus and with some of the other material around the space is that because there's so much to think about and there's so many things you could do, it's very easy to quickly get confused and, and to throw too much stuff at people. So we tried to kind of pair it right back and focus on helping candidates really understand the basics what does the manifesto mean? What does it mean in practice? What, how are the principles applied? What are the, 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 the things that people do in order to be agile, not just um, the, the practices and the, um, the rules around Scrum and so on? Brilliant. And I think that's, that's exactly what we wanted to do with the certificate, wasn't it? Was to make it something that, that was um, useful. The, the whole purpose of any syllabus, any exam, any certificate is that the person who sits it can then go and do something different in their day job, can then go and apply, it, can then go and, and really make a difference. And I think what both Simon and Margaret have spoken about it, it yeah, really, really puts that in the right place. So if we if we um, move forward and start to think then um, about what the what's actually in the course, as I say, we've, we're looking at um, making sure that as somebody sits this course, as they get that certificate, it means that they can do something, something different um, and then improve the processes or improve the ways of working in their own organisation. Simon, would you say that what we've got included in the course does that, does that enable somebody to do it differently and to really understand it, to make a difference? I think it gives them the information that they need to make the right choices. And some of those choices might be um, to go and get a depth of knowledge by doing a Scrum certification or um, hiring a certain kind of person in their organisation. And it's really about focusing on, on, on um, the, like I said a second ago, the basics and, and what makes people um, get value from Agile and, and how can they avoid some of the pitfalls. So we've changed around the order of some of the things. So um, it's very common in an Agile course to leap straight into the manifesto, which is fine. Um, but then it becomes a little bit adversarial sometimes, where, where it's almost you're saying to people, whatever you did before is wrong, this is the right way to do it. And what we wanted to do was to help lead people through it a bit more and understand where does Agile fit? Um, and it's in that more volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous space, which is not so good for, for classic traditional approaches. And of course, we know the world is moving more in that direction, which is why Agile becomes more, more, more frequently the right answer, but not always the right answer. And then we wanted to give them all that foundational knowledge and, and, and spend time on, on some of those basics, you know, so talking about each of the uh, value statements and then enough about the roles without trying to get into the same level of detail the Scrum certificate will get into and enough about the practices, not to teach them the practices, but to make them aware of the practices so that they can either maybe um, understand if their organisation is applying things that they should be and um, maybe help them to ask questions of their teams if they're in a leadership position or if they're managing um, work or, or agile teams are helping them ask the right questions of, of the people around them because as, as Margaret said earlier and um, it's very common to go into organizations that will tell you they're being agile and when you look at what they're doing they might be doing scrum and they might have sprints and they might have things they call stand-ups but they're not getting the value to the customer in the way that you would expect them to so partly this is about helping people that want to know enough about agile but not be a practitioner give them enough knowledge and confidence to ask the right questions of those that are or are claiming to be practitioners in terms of the the, the content cover it's not massively different from the previous and um, we've tried to simplify it, as I said, we've tried to um, take out some of the, uh, there was a bit of an assumption that, that scaling is inevitable. So we want to help people avoid scaling first. So that's why we've changed a bit at the back about scaling, where we've, we've turned it around to saying, here's some things you can do that prevent the need for scaling. 
and then probably the decision to scale is one you would not expect of somebody to have this level of, of qualification for you know maybe in the practitioner space so there's things like that we're trying to make it simpler fabulous and, and margaret was there anything more that you wanted to add in terms of what the course involves or equally um how it differs from from the previous certificate yeah, I think really just to uh, emphasise what Simon was saying, um, if, if you look at other certifications such as Scrum, um, I think they tend to focus more on what you should do. Um, whereas with this Agile Foundation, what we wanted was um, really for people to go away from, from doing the training to encourage them to think about how they do things rather than what they do. It's quite, quite a difficult concept really to explain, but this takes us back to the mindset. And it really is about that mindset of thinking more about what you're doing and how you do it, um, rather than following a process um, which tells you what to do. Um, so almost like switching people's brains back on if it's been switched off because they're used to following processes and using tools. Um, and I think that is very, very difficult to teach um, in, in a three-day um, training course. Um, but hopefully the, um, the way that we phrased not just the syllabus, but also written the questions for the exams is going to push people in that direction so that they come away being able to explain um, why why you would do a certain thing and how how you would do it uh, rather than just recall things and um and describe them the other thing worth mentioning is the the rules around writing syllabuses have changed um between when this syllabus um originally came out four years ago and, and this year so we had to write the syllabus in a different way and use that taxonomy and that language like explain and describe and and recall and um, it wasn't as simple a job as just looking at the language and re refactoring it because a lot of the things in the original syllabus you couldn't just write the, the the new syllabus in that way so we had to kind of really rethink how we would express that and what we did then you know help the question writers with the right questions and help syllabus um, training providers with, with putting the right content in their courses and also allowing candidates that did want to try to study for this just from the syllabus them and the reading list you know give them enough guidance that they could reasonably expect to be not that surprised at any question that popped up fabulous thank you i think if we if we move forward and take a look at um why why would we take this course that you know um there's a few people that we need to consider. There's those that are taking the course for them, for themselves. We call those the end user, that's the candidate who's going to sit it. But also we, we um, want to think about why take this course as an employer? Why do you want your employees to take this particular course? So um, Margaret, Simon, between yourselves, I suppose, looking at it from both an end user perspective and an employer perspective, why this course? What, what is it that they're going to get out of this that's going to help them with their future career? I think this slide explains it relatively well and, and we've kind of alluded to it in the past couple of answers. But yeah, this is about giving people an insight into what Agile means and, and not, not assuming that they've got a waterfall mindset to begin with, but also not assuming that they don't. So it's really about providing an entry to, to this way of thinking and help people understand what Agile means, what it means for their organisation, whether you're from the employer perspective or the end user, and how you can use that knowledge to help change the way that you deliver value to your customers or how your teams deliver value um, to your customers. So. As a stepping stone to further certification, yes, but also as a really com quite comprehensive, but 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 not too heavy on the, the the lists of things. You know, we're not asking people to remember a thousand different frameworks and you know recite in detail. I don't know, Kinefin and things like that. It's more about saying, um, this is a really important thing to know as the world moves to be more volatile and complex. And and what we've seen with with COVID nineteen is just re-emphasised. And how important it is for organisations to be adaptive, and this is a really good way to be adaptive. And anything further from yourself, Margaret? Yeah, and that, that that's exactly right. And uh, again, um, just remembering that this is not just about digital stuff. Um, the agile principles can very very much be applied 
in many different situations. Any, any situation really where you've got um, either a product or a service outcome. Um, you know, and quite often I do that myself. Um, I'll, I'll look at something I'm doing and I'll apply the agile principles and you know, that really helps you to work out what you need to do first um, and how you do it so you can get feedback and uh, all the other good things and realise value early. So, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you've said that, Margaret, because feedback we've had from somebody else has actually didn't just transform what they were doing in the workplace or the way they thought in the workplace, it actually transformed what they were thinking in general in their everyday life. The approach to things was a different approach. So it just goes to show what a, a different sort of mindset could do. Um, I suppose moving on then from there, um, we're then starting to take a look at um, who it's for. Um, and th there's lots of different people, as, as both Margaret and, and Simon have said, it isn't just about IT anymore. It's not just about those working in, um, in IT industry. There's a number of different industries and areas that, that need that agile um, approach. Um, and for people who want to work in, in those types of organisations, whether you're at that kind of entry level right the way through to a leader in an organisation, understanding the approach is incredibly important um, to work within that type of environment. Is there anybody specifically or anything that you wanted to call out, Simon, in terms of who would be best suited for this, for this course? Um. I think if somebody is intending to be an agile practitioner and they expect to be working inside a scrum team or on you know a larger safe program or something like that this is probably not the right course for them because they'll get the introduction bit when they start doing you know a scrum master um, or one of the BCS agile other agile offerings so it's it's actually better some in some respects for people that are in a non IT role you know, we're seeing Agile having tremendous value in things like in HR and in portfolio management and in um, IT support and things like that. So, um, and even in the public sector with some of the, the citizen facing things like passport applications and, and things like that. So, um, if you intend, if you want to be a Scrum Master, I wouldn't start here because the, the beginning of a Scrum course is going to um, repeat a lot of it. But, um, but if you're not sure what you want to do, you're not sure what value you can get, this is a great place to start because it might be the, the um, give you the enthusiasm or the confidence to say, I do want to be a Scrum Master. But if you've got your heart set on that, then this wouldn't be the right place to start. So I think for the people who it is the right place to start, it's those that, that have a feeling that Agile can help them or their organisation and, and want to understand more about it and, and feel that they're qualified to have an opinion or qualified to maybe uh, write a business case or, or um, lobby their organisation to adapt a more agile approach. Brilliant. And then when we're talking, look, you know, obviously this is a certificate that BCS offer. Uh, we've got the syllabus. We've talked very much about what that course is and what that entails. There is an exam at the end of it because there's a certificate at the end of it. So we need to think about, okay, what what's the format for the exam? We've um, we've got a digital exam for this, so it's um, a sixty minute question. 60 minute question a 60 minute exam with 40 multiple choice questions um, that can be sat and can be remotely invigilated which is important obviously under the current circumstances that it isn't just that you would need to attend a classroom and sit that exam in a, in a physical location being invigilated by somebody sitting in front of you it is digital based so it is able to be sat um online and re um invigilated remotely or it can be sat at a pearson view center um if you would prefer to be in that kind of environment uh so just just moving on from the exam you know obviously we need to talk about the exam but once you've got that once you've sat and passed that exam and you've got that certificate under your belt what does that do for your career what does that mean next where are you going to go in that journey um, and Simon's talked about the idea of um, becoming a scrum master or different areas within within that agile world. Uh, Margaret, is there anything that you wanted to add about that career pathway for, for people who are doing a perhaps an agile foundation um, certificate? Um, 
Well, I, I suppose really just the awareness that there there is a practitioner certification which uh, follows on from from the foundation, um, and again, you know, it, it it should be agnostic because we don't want to focus on any one particular uh, method or framework, um, but that certainly will be more about how um, these agile principles are applied in practice, um, which is something which you can only really build on once you've started at the foundation level. Brilliant. And and, and from yourself, um, Simon, you know, we, we've said here it aligns with Sophia, which is which is a skills framework, um, and there's the ability to then move on and, and work within the sort of BCS membership. Is there anything further you'd like to add? Yeah, I think um, it's it's an interesting thing this because we're aligning it with Sophia at the low levels of uh, of competence, but actually, what a lot of what we're talking about is of tremendous value for leaders and people for whom, in other parts of their role, they might be much more comfortable expecting themselves to be at Sophia six and seven. But if you're Sophia six and seven and you're you're there because you're applying a very kind of structured command and control CEO rules the world approach to your business then this kind of certification can help you re-pivot your, uh, your leadership intent and become a better leader. So it can actually really improve your performance at the high levels of Sophia, even though in the face of it, it's, it's a level three certification. So, so there's a little bit more to it, I think, than, than, than it appears. Fabulous, thank you. Um, and just moving on then um, from the sort of career path, um, a, a further slide just to talk about that career framework and, and, and understanding, I suppose, what that Sophia um, means. And, and as Simon said, we've got those levelings. It's the it's the skills framework that we work towards. At the end of completing this certificate, you are given BCS membership, which is a great offer. It's something that you'll get as part of completing the certificate. Um, but there's so much within that membership that can help to take your career further. So it's important that we sort of um, mention that, that that's something that you can that you can look at. Um, just conscious of time, so just sort of moving forward from there. It, it's about the next steps. It's about, OK, if you want to sit this certificate, what do you do now? Um, there's the BCS website that's got lots of information on there. Uh, so as an end user, as a candidate or as an employer, absolutely go on to our BCS website and take a look at the information in and around the certification. As a training provider, if you speak to your key account manager, they can they can talk to you about how to add this particular certification to your um, to your portfolio of, of certificates that you offer. Um, and we'll then start to look at how we can support you and train you and really make sure that your sales teams are able to sell it, but also that, that your trainers are comfortable with what it is. Um, and alongside that, you'll get the courseware from, from BCS and the sample papers so that you're in a really great position to, to offer this out to your candidates. So for the candidates, there's the website and the employers, there's the website. Training providers, you've got your key account manager from there. So I think we're at a stage Perfect. of, I was just going to say, Natalie, I think we're at a stage of asking que or answering questions if there's any that have been submitted. Yes, so uh, thank you very much to our speakers for that very informative webinar. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, so yes, as Pat's just said, if you have any questions, uh, please submit them via the question box on your screen now. Um, and we'll take a few um, and then close. So I've got, oh, I've got one here. Um, so I'll, I'll open this up to all of the speakers. So whoever jumps in. <laughs> um, so I've got someone who said, do I need to specialize in a certain type of agile for my job? I'll take, I'll take that one. I, I would say no is, is probably the best answer. I mean, clearly, some organisations are, are bought into particular approaches. Um, some are very susceptible to some very talented salespeople. Um, but but if if any good understanding of agile allows you to apply any of the agile approaches, whether that's safe or less, or uh, Scrum at scale, or Scrum or Kanban, or any of any of the other variants, 
um, they've all, they're all based on the same basics. So understand the basics well, and you'll be able to jump into lots of different things. And even if you are heading down a particular path, remain open to a different approach because not every problem has the right, has the same um, agile approach optimized for it. So it's so always be keep an open mind, I would say. Perfect, thank you. Um, we have one here from uh, T. Fabia. Fabi, sorry if I got that wrong. <laughs> How many levels are there to complete the agile certification? I'll take that one. We've got the um, Agile Foundation course, uh, which is a certificate in its own right. If you want to move up and do an Agile Practitioner course, you absolutely can do it. There is that progression between the two, but equally um, one is about giving that fundamental knowledge and the other is about practicing it and being that advocate for it. Equally, you can also then start to, um, I suppose, specialise from within there. So the, um, the Scrum Master type approach, et cetera. So, you can just do the one and that gives you a great certificate in itself or you can start to progress through the levels but that will be dependent on what you need and what you're after and what your employer is after i suppose okay thank you for that pat um we've got one once you pass the certification is the validity only for a year or two um no it's valid the, the certificate is valid um the, the membership with bcs is for a year but the certificate is is valid okay um next question do you think agile will continue growing as a methodology maybe sign in um i think it will i think the the word agile has become a little bit overused and it's it's, it's almost it's it's a bit of a branding problem but but the principles behind it you know they, they've proven valuable um for 20 years already and um, i think there's a big shift now into much more how do you make organizations agile so this notion of organizational agility or business agility and how do we fundamentally change how we structure work uh, beyond just a single team building a software product and um, so far i think all the manifesto values have held up really well so I can't see that changing, although some of the branding might change a little bit. Yeah, yeah I think uh, Simon's absolutely right. So um, in the, the, the 17 years that I've been doing Agile, um, the principles are still there and they're exactly the same. And I, I'm always amazed um, when I come in, into a new situation and uh, those principles still apply just as much as they did 17 years ago. So I think that's a selling point really for agile as a foundation because um, those principles aren't going to change although there, there will be methodologies that um, change and grow as time goes on perfect thank you margaret um i will take one more question so um this is from a training provider i believe how long will it take to become accredited to deliver the course Pat, do you want to answer that uh, one, maybe? I was going to say, that's, that's got to be over to me, hasn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> so in terms of the accreditation process, obviously it's important um, that it's a robust process and that, that can actually add some time into getting it. You'd need to speak to your key account manager first of all. They are going to be the person who can start to work on the, the legal side of things, the contract side of things. Then we'd need to take a look at um, the people who you've got who were able to deliver the qualification so we'd need to make sure that they were the right people and we'd need to support you with making sure that they were at the right level to understand the um the qualification once we've got all of the relevant things in place there's obviously some tick box bits and pieces that need to go in as well so making sure that we've got everything that we need um for, from that perspective but to give you the confidence that we're there to support you as much as you're there to support your um to support your candidates so that process can be sort of six weeks um but it's dependent on, on obviously how much you can get through to us how much we can um support or how much support you require from us to really make sure that you that you're moving it in the right direction amazing thank you very much um 
Thank you to our speakers and thank you all for joining us on this webinar today. For more information about the new BCS Foundation Certificate in Agile and all of our other Agile certificates, please go to bcs.org forward slash Agile Certified. Thank you very much. Thank you.